Welcome to this tutorial where we will be discussing the nucleus which we can think of as the brain of our cells. Now a nucleus is something we are only going to find within eukaryotic cells so we have our nucleus here straight away and we probably already know that it's where we are going to house our DNA and chromosome. So let's write down that it is the DNA control center of our cell and it contains our cells genetic material. So if it contains our cell's genetic material, we can kind of uh, deduce straight away that it's going to be well protected and well regulated. So let's uh, zoom in here and see what the nucleus actually looks like. So I have a nucleus up here now with all of its uh, different components. And as you can see, I drew it quite large, just as I drew it quite large within the eukaryotic cell itself. So we'll just write down that it's actually the largest organelle within our cells. It's also spherical, so round, and usually there's only one of them per cell. Now some cells do have more than one nucleus, but for the majority, they only have one. So some cells have more than one nucleus. But there are actually cells in our body that do not have a nucleus at all. And that's only one specific type. So we'll write down that all cells are nucleated apart from one type. And that's our mature red blood cells. And I'll draw up a few of those here so that we remember. Red blood cells, our mature red blood cells, do not have a nucleus. And now that we know what types of cells do and do not have a nucleus, we can talk a bit about the actual structure of our nucleus and what it's going to be doing within the cell. So, structure. Well, the first thing we can write down that's unique to our nucleus is that it has two lipid bilayers. Now, our actual cell itself only has one lipid bilayer, but our nucleus has two of them. And this is for a specific purpose. So I'll draw two layers here. One of these layers will be the inner layer and the outer layer is going to be continuous with another organelle that we have called the endoplasmic reticulum. And we'll call the uh, double lipid bilayer or phospholipid bilayer of our nucleus the nuclear envelope. And as I just mentioned, our outer layer is continuous with the endoplasmic reticulum, specifically the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And I've just drawn that here. We can see the rough endoplasmic reticulum studded with ribosomes, so these little red dots all over it. But our rough endoplasmic reticulum isn't the only organelle we have studded with ribosomes. The actual nucleus itself is studded with ribosomes, so I'm just going to draw uh, little ribosomes all over the outer layer of our nuclear envelope. And we'll just take a moment to say here that one of the reasons that we have two layers within our nuclear envelope is to protect the genetic material that we house within our nucleus. We don't want the genetic material to accidentally leave the nucleus and we don't want anything that's in our cytoplasm to accidentally diffuse into the nucleus. So that's one of the reasons that we have two layers. But we also have something that uh, spans across those two layers called nuclear pores. And the nuclear pores are going to help control molecule entry and exit to our nucleus. Now I'll just uh, outline a couple of the nuclear pores here that we can see spanning through the two membranes of our nuclear envelope. So they're going to span across both of the phospholipid bilayers. And I'll write that down here. We have our nuclear pores. And the nuclear pores themselves are going to be made of uh, protein complexes. And we refer to the protein complex that makes our nuclear pores as the NPCs, or nuclear pore complex. Okay, so we have our outer lipid bilayer of the nucleus, which is going to be studded with ribosomes and is continuous with the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And we have our nuclear pores, which span across both bilayers. But what about our inner membrane, or the inner layer of the nuclear envelope? Well, it's going to be lined by something called your nuclear lamina. 
and the nuclear lamina is made of uh, proteins called laminins which are going to form intermediate filaments and are almost a cytoskeletal network for the inside of your nucleus. And that nuclear lamina is going to help do a few different things within our nucleus. First of all, it's going to help by providing scaffolding, which helps the nucleus maintain its shape. It's also going to provide an anchor point for your DNA and chromosomes, and also an anchorage point for the nuclear pores themselves. Now that we know the structure of our nucleus, we can begin to talk about the function. And one of the functions of our nucleus is being the mitotic center. So the mitotic center meaning it's where we house our DNA. And without the DNA or without the nucleus, we can't uh, go through mitosis. So if a cell is anuclear, like a red blood cell, it can't go through with mitosis. So it can't reproduce. Next, we'll find that it is the mRNA production center of the cell. So it's going to be where we create messenger RNA. And we do that through a process called transcription. And we'll do a whole video on transcription very soon. So mRNAs being the uh, messengers that go out into your cell to help produce proteins. So we have our DNA here within the cell. I'll just draw this up. Uh, DNA. So we've got this DNA here. And this DNA is going to, through the process of transcription, create a messenger RNA. And the messenger RNA will then leave the cell through the nuclear pores and in the cytoplasm, with the help of ribosomes, it's going to create proteins. Okay, so so far we have that it is the mitotic center of the cell and also where we will be producing mRNA, so doing transcription. Next, the thing that we mentioned straight away at the start, the DNA control center. So it's going to be where we store DNA and we're going to store the DNA in chromatin, which is what makes up our chromosomes. So our chromosomes will be within our nucleus. And last but certainly not least is that we house a structure within our nucleus called the nucleolus. And the nucleolus is going to be responsible for ribosome construction. And we'll do a whole video on the nucleolus as well. So this area that I'm just outlining here we call the nucleolus or the nucleoli. And I'll write nucleoli here. And with that, we have covered all of the basic information about our nucleus. So we'll write down one more time that it is basically the brain of your cell. It's going to house your genetic material within two lipid bilayers. And we'll also perform transcription here. So creating mRNAs, which will then leave through the nuclear pores to create proteins. Also, we'll house the nucleolus or ribosome construction center within. Now, I hope this video has been helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.